so welcome everyone to our soul power session for this month with me louise charm and james from soul signature very happy to have you all with us today and just a reminder that the purpose of these sessions is for us to just really tune into different themes related to how we can fully express our soul's light in this lifetime, how we can really serve as the highest expression of ourselves. And, and I'm going to offer you some clearing today. We're going to use the compassion key modality, which most of you are familiar with by now. I'll explain that as well to clear some of the resistances that are coming up in relation to our theme today, which is trusting your higher self. Then I'll do a light language activation at the end of the call and you're free to uh, interact using the chat. So if you don't know what that is, should be a little um, kind of speech bubble icon at the bottom of your screen. So you can use that to chat at any time. So feel free to say hi and lovely to have a few, quite a crowd of you here today and more I know listening on the replay. So let's just take a moment before we jump in to take a breath close your eyes feel your feet connected to the floor just taking a breath into your body sensing this beautiful physical body that you have this physical form but also sensing how much of you is also formless feeling the energy of yourself the frequency of your soul which is animating this physical body but feeling how much more of you there is, feeling the vastness of your soul that is being channeled, being expressed through your physical form in your lifetime on the earth at this time. And our theme today is trusting your higher self. So I'm going to invite you right now to have a sense of connecting to your higher self, however that feels for you. And so really trusting yourself to have that experience for yourself and even tuning into what is your higher self. Maybe that's something that you've pondered. I know for me, it's I feel my higher self as a connection between my physical incarnation, my human being and my vast oversoul, that vastness of who I am in spirit, myself as source light and feeling that my higher self is helping me and guiding me from that place of infinite expansion and, and dropping that down into my human experience and so if we take a moment to really feel into that and invite our own higher selves you might also want to call that your infinite self whatever that feels good for you Sometimes people don't like the sense of something being higher than you. And I guess also, you know, when we truly embody that, that's who we are. We have that. That's the fullest expression of who we are. So you might even want to feel that just as your most expanded self, your infinite self, your source self. And just take a moment to feel somatically how it feels to invite that energy into your body. Maybe you feel it as an expansion. Maybe you feel it as an energy wrapping around you. Maybe you feel it as a light above you or behind you, around you, supporting you. And see if you can have a sense of merging that energy into your being, perhaps through your heart or perhaps just feeling it activating every cell in your body. And as you do this, just noticing how you feel about that. Does it feel that you can welcome in this energy of yourself or feel perhaps you just feel it as a sense of energy expanding from your heart rather than something outside yourself that can sometimes feel uncomfortable, right? So just to notice, what is my process? How do I connect with my higher self? And just to notice if there's any resistance there, any difficulty, any, any thoughts that arise, any sensations that arise. I can feel the back of my heart starting to activate. So just feeling that for yourself when you take this time to tune in, to invite your higher self to embody your physical being. How does that feel for you? And what do you notice comes up in the process? 
So just asking our higher selves to direct and guide our call today to be in the highest for all of us. And I'm going to read, as I always do, a little bit of a channeled message about our theme today, trusting your higher self. And as I read that, I just invite you to just feel into that, to listen from your heart, from your whole being, and just to notice what arises for you as I read. Imagine that the vastness of your soul is like the Milky Way, a stream of stars spanning the night sky and too huge for you to perceive in its holes. Imagine that from each of these stars stream beams of light that reach down to embrace your physical form. These beams of light contain within them all the information and light codes from the universe and the vastness of your soul. As this light touches your body, mind and heart, it brings a higher perspective, one that illuminates your experience not just as a human being on the earth, but as a soul travelling throughout universes. So when you think of your higher self, we invite you to think of it as a light that travels throughout time and space to connect you with the vastness of your soul and all the wisdom and knowing that exists within that vastness. You can call that light into your being at any time to offer you guidance and comfort on your human journey. And in, in truth, this light is always within you. Trust that your higher self has access to the entirety of your soul and spirit and is only ever guiding you to navigate the highest trajectory of your soul's journey. Your higher self also discerns what you need to know and when in your human experience, so that rather than overwhelming you with too much information that would simply confuse and frighten your human mind, it is always guiding you one step at a time so that you are able to integrate that guidance before taking the next step. So trust that you are always receiving what you need, even if your mind might want to know or less. From a human perspective, you can't always fully understand the choices that your higher self is guiding you to in any one moment. It may only be as you look back that you're able to perceive the perfection of this guiding hand as it took you from one choice point to another. So there is always an element of surrender in learning to trust your higher self. Surrender of the ego mind, Surrender of personal agendas and preferences, which may feel attractive in the moment, but ultimately are not for your highest good. Learning to trust your higher self can feel like a vast leap into the unknown, but we invite you to consider it as softening into the loving embrace of a parent or friend that absolutely has your best interests at heart and would never harm you. Ultimately, you will learn to automatically embody and express your higher self through your own being and will be able to make choices in an instant that you know are in the highest for you and all concerned. This will take practice, and the first steps are to take time to tune into your higher self, to ask for the support and guidance you need, and then open to receive it. This may come as an intuitive knowing, a message or invitation from outside of yourself that feels deeply resonant with your heart, or an unexpected opportunity that comes your way and calls to your soul. Courage may be called upon to follow this guidance, but your higher self is always supporting you and resourcing you as you commit to the actions and choices that flow from this guidance. As you build a deeper trust in your own higher self, you will gradually quieten the ego mind and experience the rewards of a life guided from the vastness of your soul. So just taking a few breaths to integrate that message there noticing how that feels for you feel free to share in the chat any responses to that and i'll just explain again our process for anyone who uh, is new so when you registered for the call you shared you responded to some questions and the questions were about how you relate to your higher self um, whether that's an easy process for you what would how your life would change if you had a greater trust in your higher self. And we're going to do some clearing using the compassion key. So this is a process of spoken word compassion where we speak aloud to ourselves, to those parts of ourselves that are holding the beliefs and the feelings 
uh, that that may be holding us back from this connection. And so when we speak these phrases out loud, beginning with the phrase, I'm so sorry, you feel this, or I'm so sorry, this happened. What we're doing with that power, that energy of compassion, is that we are lovingly dissolving these experiences, these fears, these doubts, these beliefs, and just creating space for a different experience. So that's really what the practice is here. It's very simple. And as you say the phrases out loud, it's very important that you say them out loud. What this what this does is it allows your whole being to respond and, uh, and to shift and to rewire in the presence of this compassion, which is dissolving these what we call karmic imprints in the compassion key. So I have created some phrases based around some of the things that you have shared and also some of the things that I've just intuited into, but we're also going to use the chat so that you can share in real time what's coming up for you. So I'm going to lead you in some phrases and also I think am I going to use a phrase today? One thing we can also do is to use a, a diagnostic phrase and the phrase that we're going to use, I'm going to write this in the chat, I can find the chat, is I trust my higher self to give me clear guidance always. I trust my higher self to give me clear guidance always. Okay, so I've written that in the chat. Thank you, Lee. Lee's saying that was lovely. I can feel the part of my heart-mind connection is going through massive cleaning. Oh, yes. Okay, beautiful. Love that. All right, so I trust my higher self to give me clear guidance always. So I invite you to just close your eyes if you can remember the phrase or just read it from the chat but as you speak it aloud just notice how true does this phrase feel for you as you speak it aloud so our mind might often want it to be true but maybe our body might have some resistance so just noticing any physical sensations I trust my higher self to give me clear guidance always so just noticing what you feel and notice in response to that phrase and then just see if you can give it a rating out of 10 so if 10 out of 10 was absolutely true in every cell and fiber of my being no doubt at all uh, that'd be a 10 out of 10 a 1 out of 10 would be doesn't feel true at all so just share that what, what do you notice in response I trust my higher self to give me clear guidance always I know I can feel for myself I can trust that as I look back, but sometimes it's not so easy to trust when I'm in the uncertainty of, of wanting to make a new choice for the future. It's like, ooh, okay, and, and that discernment, can I discern that my higher self has given me clear guidance? So, yeah, April's got a seven there. So, yeah, just rating that out of ten. Sometimes I question it. Yeah, yeah, right. So we're always in this dance, aren't we, between the human ego mind and that higher self-guidance and that's really the biggest challenge here is that you know the ego mind wants to protect us it wants to keep us in the safe and the familiar and yet our higher self is probably going to lead us into experiences of growth and expansion so there's already that disconnect there from what the what the ego wants to do for us and what the higher self wants to do for us and of course we can you know get a little bit stuck in the middle there sometimes so just, yeah. Chantal says nine or ten. I've never asked, just never asked before. Okay, Kim's at a six. Okay. But working on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're all working on it. Lee says, oh, you said it. It's the ego mind that tells me I can't discern the higher self. Such disrespect to higher self. True ten, but ego mind too. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, right. So um so hopefully today we'll bring those a little, oh, negative two. Oh, good, minus two, yes. <laughs> okay. All right, well, okay. Yeah, so a little bit of work to do today. So yeah, so keep sharing those and sharing any resistance. Why is that? So why is it that you don't feel that? Why is it that that's not true for you? Okay, just feeling into that. I can't trust my higher self to give me clear guidance always because why? Has something happened, right? Sometimes we'll feel things have happened in the past where I thought I was trusting my higher self and then things seem to go wrong. Okay, so we can have those sorts of feelings might arise in resistance that mean that that doesn't feel really true for us. Maybe the word always is triggering for you, right? 
And just this sense of trust too, right? Maybe you can't trust your higher self because when you've trusted anything outside of yourself or what's felt like an authority you can trust, that's gone gone badly, right? So lots of things can give us this experience. Linda Lada 5. Okay, so we've got 5s and 7s and <laughs> minus 2s and 9s. So big range of experience there. So I know Alison's just joining again. Uh, difficult connection so we are saying the phrase i trust my higher self to give me clear guidance always so just saying that aloud feeling their response okay all right and then we're going to start with some phrases so i'm going to just start with some a group of phrases around not being able to connect all right so i've got a few different themes here some of them based on what you shared so let's begin with some clearing. So all of us, as we say the phrases, you're going to take a deep breath into your heart and solar plexus, and you're going to say the phrase out loud after me. So I'm pretty sure everyone's on mute. Ready? I'll just check that. Yep, so you're all on mute. So as you say the phrases, that's fine. Just speak it into your own space. Speaking to yourself, speaking to the parts of yourself that are holding these fears, these resistances, these limiting beliefs. Okay. I'm so sorry you couldn't hear your higher self's guidance. I'm so sorry you couldn't connect to your higher self. I'm so sorry you don't even know what your higher self is. I'm so sorry you couldn't distinguish the voice of your higher self from the voice of your ego mind. I'm so sorry you got stuck in your monkey mind. I'm so sorry you didn't make time to stop and listen to your inner voice. I'm so sorry the voice of your ego mind drowns out the voice of your higher self. I'm so sorry your higher self is a concept, not a lived experience. I'm so sorry you yearned for your higher self without knowing what it was. I'm so sorry you didn't know you could ask for help. I'm so sorry you didn't know it was always there for you. I'm so sorry you couldn't believe it was always there for you. I'm so sorry you missed out on that clear guidance. I'm so sorry you missed out on that love and comfort. I'm so sorry you couldn't surrender and trust you would be guided to your highest good. I'm so sorry you feel disconnected. I'm so sorry you feel unsupported. I'm so sorry you feel alone.
I'm so sorry you're too stressed to hear your higher self clearly. Okay, so let's just take a breath. Feel free to share anything in the chat that's come up from any of those phrases. So some may really land for you. Others may just pass through. So let's do a few phrases around discerning and how we respond to guidance that we receive. Okay, so just taking another deep breath into your heart and solar plexus, saying the phrases out loud after me. I'm so sorry you can't discern if the guidance you receive is from your higher self. I'm so sorry your beliefs and emotions scramble the signal. I'm so sorry the past gets in the way of the future. I'm so sorry you second guess yourself. I'm so sorry sometimes the guidance you receive is easy and sometimes it's scary. I'm so sorry you're afraid of following your higher self guidance. I'm so sorry you're afraid of the actions your higher self invites you to take. I'm so sorry your soul is willing but your ego is afraid. I'm so sorry receiving clear guidance means that change is coming. I'm so sorry you're scared of change. I'm so sorry your ego prefers the status quo. I'm so sorry your mind wants to stay safe. And let's do a few phrases around feeling that when you followed your guidance, things maybe went wrong and creating this distrust of the higher self. I'm so sorry when you followed your higher self guidance, things went wrong. I'm so sorry you don't know if your higher self wants to help you or harm you. I'm so sorry you perceive your higher self as an enemy rather than an ally. I'm so sorry you can't trust your own higher self anymore. I'm so sorry you can't forgive your higher self for leading you into suffering. I'm so sorry you want to tell your higher self to go away and leave you alone. I'm so sorry you can't find peace in this human experience. I'm so sorry your higher self expects too much of you. Okay, and before we go into a few phrases in the chat, I'll just do a few more around 
maybe that we had this connection, but we lost it. So again, deep breath into your heart and solar plexus. I'm so sorry you used to be connected to your higher self, but you lost that connection. I'm so sorry you can't keep that connection open all the time. I'm so sorry bad things happened and you shut down your connection. I'm so sorry you didn't want to see anymore. I'm so sorry you went into hiding. I'm so sorry you disconnected from your heart. I'm so sorry you ignored the promptings of your heart. Okay, so let's take a breath. Maybe just sharing any responses to those. Were you a very intuitive child, perhaps? Did you have a really strong connection to an expanded sense of yourself? And perhaps that wasn't welcomed, perhaps that wasn't supported. So Shantar's saying, feeling being turned back, rejected, denied, scared um, of your power. Not feeling worthy. No one loved me when I was in my power. Yeah. Kim saying, yes, very connected at a young age. So what happens? You know, why do we stop trusting that? You know, is it because others, you know, don't uh, support that in us? And we're going to do a few phrases around that, around our, you know, what we grew up with. Um, perhaps in your family that, you know, only, it was only ever God, you know, there was no sense of you having any kind of greater power in yourself. It was only ever, you know, an external God, an external authority. Chantal saying trading love and acceptance for our divine self. Yes. Yeah, so it's kind of like this agreement. Oh, well, I'll, I'll dim my light so that you'll love and accept me. Right. Feeling sad. Yeah. Parents, society, friends turned it off. Yeah. Says Kim. All right, let's do a few phrases around that, around not being supported in that when we were younger. Okay. All right, so deep breath into your heart and solar plexus. I'm so sorry they didn't know that they had higher selves. I'm so sorry that they believed in an authority outside of themselves. I'm so sorry when you connected to your higher self, they didn't understand what you were doing. I'm so sorry they disrupted your connection. I'm so sorry they overrode your guidance. I'm so sorry you had to follow their authority instead of your own. I'm so sorry you had to give away your authority in order to be loved and accepted. I'm so sorry they made you doubt yourself. I'm so sorry you learned to question your own guidance and inner authority. I'm so sorry their voices were louder than your inner voice.
I'm so sorry you couldn't shut out their voices. I'm so sorry they made you believe you weren't worth listening to. I'm so sorry you learned to ignore your inner voice. I'm so sorry because they ignored you. You learned to ignore yourself. All right, deep breath there. So yeah, feel free to share that. Alison said, I felt connected, but no one else around me seemed to be connected to the higher self. So I thought I was weird and different. Yeah. Yeah, and Chantal saying, yeah, until we completely forget we are the light. Okay, people are, must be Mercury retrograde. People are dropping off, <laughs> dropping back in. All right. Welcome back. If you dropped off, then you're back in. So having just done a few phrases around that, around our families, not having that connection, not being able to understand that in ourselves and us believing that we're weird, we're different and dimming that light down. So let's maybe just say um, a couple more phrases based on what you're sharing there. Okay, I'm so sorry you felt connected but no one else did. I'm so sorry you thought you were weird and different. Yeah. I'm so sorry you couldn't maintain your frequency. I'm so sorry you lowered your frequency to match theirs. Yeah, so thanks for me sharing. Not dropping down to a lower frequency of the majority around you, but tuning up instead. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so sorry that you couldn't help them to feel that connection. I'm so sorry they couldn't help you to feel that connection. I'm so sorry that when you shine your light, you feel lonely. Yeah, I'm so sorry they were jealous of your connection and wanted to shut it down. And even just saying that's making me tune a little bit to, um, you know, if you were the one and maybe in other lifetimes, you know, the one that had that connection, you know, you maybe you were the visionary, maybe you were the seer, maybe you were the one that, you know, channeled through that those visions and that wisdom. And maybe that wasn't well received, right? So maybe we'll do a couple of phrases around that, right? I'm so sorry they didn't welcome your guidance. I'm so sorry they didn't want to hear that guidance. I'm so sorry they didn't want you to think for yourself. I'm so sorry they wanted you to unquestioningly follow their authority. I'm so sorry you're not allowed to have a mind of your own. I'm so sorry that intuition is dismissed. Let's take a breath. Oh, yeah, so sad. Right? Yeah, I'm so sorry you're sad that you ignored yourself. 
Yeah, right. So there's what happened and there's how we feel about it, right? And maybe even I'm so sorry or ashamed that you ignored yourself. You know, sometimes I can look back and feel, you know, really just see where I just didn't listen and dishonored myself effectively by not honoring that, you know, the, the guidance that I was receiving and letting someone else. Oh, they broke you. Yeah, I'm so sorry they broke you in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm so sorry you were too wild for them. Okay. All right, I want to do some phrases too around just a little bit more clearing around, you know, maybe not getting all of the vision that you want. And all of the information that you want. I mean, it did send a message to you. You know, we and I remember my spiritual teacher, one of my teachers, saying to me, you know, the if they showed you everything, you'd be so like fried. You know, you'd just be so overwhelmed. So you you, you know you can't see anything, right? But um, sometimes we want to see all the way around the corner, right? We want to see all of it all at once. So so let's do some phrases around that and um, yeah, around uh, needing to trust even when we don't get to all the information. A deep breath into your heart and solar plexus, saying the phrases out loud. I'm so sorry you can't get all the information you want all at once. I'm so sorry you can't know everything in advance. I'm so sorry. It's not safe to have the full vision all at once. I'm so sorry if you know too much about the future, it destroys the future. I'm so sorry it's not safe to clearly see that beautiful future. I'm so sorry if you see it too clearly, it might not happen. I'm so sorry it's painful to see all of it all at once. I'm so sorry when you see that beautiful future and it doesn't come into being, it's painful. I'm so sorry you thought it was better not to see that beautiful future. I'm so sorry you accidentally blinded yourself. I'm so sorry that clear visions and knowing about the future leads to heartbreak. I'm so sorry the most beautiful visions end up in the bin. I'm so sorry it's not safe to know the divine plan. I'm so sorry it's not for you to know. I'm so sorry you're supposed to trust even though you can't see. I'm so sorry you're not allowed to see the whole map of the whole journey. I'm so sorry that only the creator can see the whole journey. All right, deep breath. Losing trust in self. Yeah. I'm so sorry you lost trust in yourself. 
All right, any other responses to that? How do you feel about that? Do you have clear vision? Do you, how do you feel when you have the clear vision? And I didn't say this one, but maybe I'm so sorry you're afraid of that beautiful vision. I'm so sorry you're afraid that what is revealed to you may never happen. I'm so sorry you feel hopeless and despairing. I'm so sorry it seems impossible for your visions to manifest in reality. Taking a breath there. Lee's writing exclusion. You want to say a little bit more about that, Lee, maybe? So how are you feeling about that fear? If you tune into feeling that, you know, you can trust. Let's say our phrase again, actually, and see if anything's shifted. I trust my higher self to give me clear guidance always. So saying that again, just noticing, and noticing if anything's shifted. Often the number will go up, our truth rating. Sometimes it goes down because we're accessing deeper layers of resistance or maybe past experiences where, you know, maybe we were punished for sharing a vision. Maybe we learned to beautiful Kim's up to an eight. Great. But as I say, it doesn't matter. Even if it goes down, it's just information. You know, there's a little bit more there, a little bit more resistance to clear. So let's really take a moment to feel into that, you know, feel into that space of, you know, I have deep, deep trust that, you know, my, my vast expanded self, my soul's light is guiding my journey and giving me the information I need along the way. Beautiful. Linda was at a seven. Not sure what you were at before, Linda, but let us know. Oh, five. Okay, great. So it's gone up a little bit. What else are you noticing? What else are you noticing? What if you could feel that really just innate knowing and confidence that at every moment, no matter what you're stepping into, you can bring through that, that message. Okay. Yeah, so it may have gone down a little bit. So just notice if your number's gone down a little bit. What are you feeling? What are you noticing? Maybe there could be another layer within your heart. Oh, now I'm noticing some sadness, some some pain perhaps around, you know, I thought I had this great connection, but now I realize, you know, in the past that's been abused or that's been compromised and, and I buried that feeling. Um, Lee saying, I heard that exclusion of the soul or higher self is what I was guilty of and could not connect. Okay, but when I said the phrase, I heard I trust my higher self to give me clear guidance always because I am that beautiful. Yes, I am my higher self. I mean, we're talking about our higher self in terms of, you know, our human mind connecting it to that. But really, you know, it is who we are, right? When we're able to put that human mind aside and really just create that space to feel that connection, it's actually always in us, right? Yeah, so let's do a phrase around that, Lee. I'm so sorry you excluded your soul and your higher self. Yeah, and I'm so sorry because you excluded your higher self, you could no longer connect. And, you know, this, this touches on this sense of, you know, sovereignty, that we always have that free will choice, right? Ultimately, our higher self is going to guide us give us, you know, give us support to, to move on a high trajectory, but we always have that free will. We can, we can choose, right? We can choose to follow that guidance or not. There's no compulsion there. Beautiful. Yeah, Lisa, I've been saying lately, I think with my heart and I love with my mind as one. Yeah, beautiful. I love that. You know, my teacher used to say about the mind that it was created to be, you know, a vessel to receive the messages of the heart, right? But we have made it our master, Right. Instead of it being that it just that it's a, it's providing that service, it's translating the impulses of our heart, the messages of our higher self, and then, you know, applying itself to, OK, how do I realize this? You know, how do I make this uh, manifest? And it's, a, you know, it's the servant of the heart and of the higher self and not the master. So so that's there's the practice. Right. Is that can we, uh, you know, take that dominance of the mind, reduce that dominance of the ego mind and just 
you know, create that space to really listen from the fullness of our being and the fullness of our hearts and allow in that, that guidance without the mind judging, without the mind wanting to question. And, you know, this is something that we're always going to have. You're always going to have that that questioning ego mind. It's not going to go away completely. It's just whether you give it, you know, that dominance and that listening and that priority or whether you, you know, just give it some reassurance. It's okay, right? Because that the ego is just afraid that you're going to be unsafe right but when we have that full and implicit trust and the more that we practice listening and following that guidance the more we have an embodied experience of wow actually that was okay right that actually worked out okay but when we have that doubt there that can distort our experience sometimes i'm so sorry okay yep yep, yep. i'm so sorry you allowed your ego mind to rule your heart I'm so sorry you let your ego mind be in the driver's seat of your life. I'm so sorry you let your ego mind trap you in suffering and stagnation. I'm so sorry you could see over the horizon but your ego mind wouldn't let you go there. I'm so sorry your ego wants to keep you on the ground and your soul wants you to fly. Right, she's just saying lying to yourself. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, I'm so sorry you chose hell to create heaven. Okay, that's an interesting one. Yeah, I'm so sorry you deceived yourself. Right, Lee's saying something about blame. Do you want to expand on that, Lee? Hmm. Maybe blaming self. I'm so sorry you blamed yourself for not following your highest guidance. So we could maybe turn that around. I'm so sorry you blamed your higher self for giving you guidance you couldn't follow. Can't tell if I'm not powerful, not enough for others. Mm. I mean, it's a bit of a, there's a, you know, we can be, if I'm so sorry, if you're not powerful, you're not enough. I'm so sorry if you're powerful, you're too much. Right, so this can really set up a dissonance in us, right? You know, we've got this call to be our powerful selves, to really follow our highest vision. But then we also have this like, but if I do that, then I'm going to be too powerful as well. So we kind of, we're supposed to be powerful and um, we're also not supposed to be powerful. So this is where you have that dance between the ego mind, you know, will worry about and the ego mind will look for safety. And so part of safety is being loved and accepted by others, right? Being part of the tribe. So if you dare to be different and, you know, follow your own guidance and do it differently, then there's that risk that you'll be cast out or ostracized. So, yeah. All right, well, we're getting near the uh, top of the hour, so I'm going to move into our activation. So let's just tune into and Maybe just if you'd like to share in the chat your intention for your connection with your higher self, what would that mean for you? So I'm going to call for an activation to support us to stay in this sense of expanded connection, of trust, of clarity, but maybe share in the chat too. What would that look and feel like for you what would that mean for you to have a greater sense of you know embodying your higher self living from that highest awareness 
I know for me it feels like I would be much less caught up in drama feels like I would be less judgmental of others because I would be able to rise above all of those little kind of ego dramas where egos get entangled so feeling into that that's how it feels for me that I'd have greater peace and equanimity right that I would trust in a bigger picture a higher perspective I'd be always able to see that not get caught and go down the rabbit hole of all the little details so Share for you, what would that look and feel like for you? What would shift if you could feel, really feel solid and connected to that highest guidance and knowing all the time? So Kim says, walking through life without judgment, being completely authentic and karma. Is that beautiful? And for me, it feels like there's a great sense of being resourced, that everything I need is always there or will be presented to me, uh, you know, the minute I think that I need it. Lee says, it feels like I'd be creating so much beauty, enjoy everything I do and say, and would be in such harmonious, right relationship with everything. A life I could see and live consciously in this frequency. Yes, beautiful. Yeah, I love that. Yes, so the way to become, you know, when we can live from that higher self place, we become a blessing as well to the world, right? Not only does it bless us in our experience, but we can share that with others. Sue's saying I'd feel more joyful and alive. I'd have the confidence to create. Yeah, right. We could trust that we're always creating in the highest way. Beautiful. Love that. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. All right. So I think we're all tuning into that. And it's really, you know, I'm inviting you to do this too, because as we all tune into what we want to create and feel, that's where our energy is flowing. So all of our collective higher selves which together are that i am presence that is really all of us because we are all connected and unified you know in that greater field of awareness so when we align our intentions to that highest expression that's where the energy flows so as i'm bringing through this light language activation it's really all of our collective higher selves bringing that through and calling that through for us and you know your higher self will guide and orchestrate what you need to receive from these frequencies so just allowing yourself to receive them as we all tune into that highest expression that highest connection for ourselves and just allowing yourself to open your heart and your field to receive that now in the highest for you Tamara Sakuchi, Murugo Sabra, Are Tele Shama Kwate Ilati et Ismara Tachili. Koma Sabri Dani Kila Koshala Manari Itaru Sota Icharma Akoeti. Rasa Chichamara Sabri Kumasi Yomura Ata Sabra Kutana Shibro Ma Alatina Sate Yokwe. Kajamaru Kadene Shibro Nasole I Shamaru Kotalebi Atur Is It Amara Kota Chile Arenati. Rasa to me chikuru masuri be edimur alle katana shuri be te arna kole. Katari shumoro us amare ke pesu kati mare ke cha aru kati ini. Tar ke sumashoro um ari te te pesu mare ke cha aru kot as ili. Tar ike samok cheri koto amore ale te et ere. Sanda shukur me te eru us ab aru kote ene mere te ia. Saranda ma che eru kote samare te ile to esir. Taro o masar ku che mar sabar it ele che eru kata ene. Sachu che mar rosu wana kati ele mo kuch ere wa ia ta. Ti ina sof te kagna ak adene mo chore kote suma ia rote. Ta samar gete che eru kote suma ai ta baru kote samar kati e che eru kote masar iti. Ra at anu mo kuch che brete ia la ta a. To us amari ke che eru suma ra ia na le te ia. Sa kote i shamaru kat ila te. Tar o samar kat i charu to masi ia ka. A deep breath in and exhaling. So it was really, um, there was some strong clearing there for third eye and throat and heart, um, really removing some veils that have been placed over our connection to our higher self. Also, a, a sense of, you know, really activating that almost as a flame within us that we're really, um, you know, the more that we, the more that we, 
listen to ourselves and tune into our higher self it's like we're kind of fanning the flames of that light within us that then gets to actually expand and be experienced in in our bodies more and in our minds and in our hearts and that there is a lightness to it and that's you know really noticing that when you're in that ego mind there's actually a density to that much more heaviness to that and that choice is made even though there could be a sense of fear or or you know it might feel a bit scary sometimes that guidance there's always a lightness to it even even though it may involve some challenging uh, you know action steps or uh, but there's a, there's a sense of lightness and liberation to that so that feeling that difference between that I guess it's that difference between the contraction of the ego mind that's going to want to keep you small and safe and the expansion of the soul that's going to want to take you somewhere you know higher even if you can't see where that is and it feels a bit scary like it would be if you <laughs> jumped off a cliff and spread your wings right but then there's that, that exhilaration that comes from that and the more that we can trust and let go of that kind of holding on the more space there is for that kind of expansive experience of you know deep trust that you are you are you have what you need you always have that wisdom and that knowing and the resources that you need and that's what embodying your higher self can feel like so feel free to share any final responses there what came up for you maybe you received some kind of vision or experience there or just a deep feeling within your body so yeah, Alison's saying, I love that tuning into the lightness of the guidance, feeling the expansion from that wisdom. Yeah. So it should feel good, you know, even though there may be those wobbles and that nervousness, you know, like the butterflies in the stomach, but but also deep knowing, you know, when I look back at the choices that, you know, sometimes we know our higher self was guiding us because we're like, our human mind is like, how did, what, why did I do that, right? You know, I can look back at my own healing journey and go, wow I, I did that program that course and then I went over there and I met those people and it's like there's a part of me looking back going wow how did that even happen right so sometimes we can it's only, as it said in the in the message in the channel message that sometimes it's only when we look back we can see that guiding hand but when we're in it we may not see that so that that's where that trust comes all right so while you're all just sharing your last um Beautiful. Thanks, Lee. Exhilaration for the freshness of this lightness. Beautiful. Thanks, Lee. All right. So let's just take a final moment to just relax, to feel that happiness and lightness in our own hearts. Giving thanks for all we've received today. Feeling the collective joy and exhilaration of all of our higher selves. Loving that we are here together, doing this work together. And I will send out the replay and it's always an invitation to have a, a short one-to-one -one session with me to explore any of these themes a little bit further. So feel free to take advantage of that. And I look forward to seeing you in a month's time. And also if you have any themes that you would like to us to cover, please feel free to share those. So thank you, everybody. Have a beautiful week. Lovely to have your energy here today. Go forth and enjoy embodying your higher self in this way. All right, lots of love. Namaste. Bye.